Action Grant. You can also see that the, uh, there is a remaining of 12,000 if we were to fund both of those projects. And as we discussed in our last meeting, the remaining balance will come from the withdrawal fee funds. So after we deduct these um, $12,000 or so, we are looking at about 287,000 remaining in the Water Management Assistance Program Fund. So I'll stop right here and ask for any questions on either of those tables before we move on to, uh, to discuss the recommendations by the members. I don't have any questions. I think it's clear. You made it very clear what we got and what's in front of us. Uh, I would, if are, are we are we open to a motion on that, Mark? Um, on on uh, what? I mean, did, this is this was just informational. Um, the yeah, I know. Get a grant on uh, or vote on is is a recommendation on the uh, withdrawal fee. Right. So if, right. you, if, if nobody else has any questions and you want to make a motion on this for all fees, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and, and make a motion that we stick to our $3 an acre foot withdrawal fee. Uh, I tried to stir up some motion a couple of years ago and it didn't make any difference. So I think we just will stick with the $3 and not get to any. Anyway, unless somebody wants to discuss it, I move that we do the three dollars an acre foot. I'll be happy to second, just you know, so we can discuss if anybody wants to. I'm, um, yeah, and, and I know, uh, yeah, what you said, Ron, is is I remember years ago we did make a and that, um, and I can't remember whether it was one of the admin and enforcement fees be knocked down or if it was something that was going to affect agriculture. I can't remember, but we did make a recommendation that we uh you know drop what reduce it kind of what we could under the statute and if i remember directly uh, correctly the director uh in phoenix just said uh no <laughs> so right um, so i'm i'm good with i guess staying with where we are and instead of just beating a dead horse So okay, so let me. Um, I have that a, was I have a motion. A that was a motion okay. that I made. Okay, yeah, you made a motion and Gary seconded it. Is there anything else? Was that you, Gary, coming on here? No, that was Dan. But uh, but let's go ahead and vote on the motion, and then, I, and then I'll ask my question with regard to the proposed projects. Well, okay, okay. So um, you know, hey, the motion's been put forward and seconded. That withdrawal fees and the withdrawal fee schedule uh, remain the same. Um, so, uh, by a voice vote, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Well, I heard three, so I guess motion carries. Okay, so Dan, did you, what did you have? So, I, I just, on the proposed projects, um, what, what uh, what do they have to go through next uh, in order to be approved, or 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 are they already approved and just awaiting funding, or what, what's uh, what's the story there? Mr. Bell, this is enough. So we are in the process of going through the um, State Historic Preservation Office and making sure that all the different uh, projects that were recommended for funding um, do not miss any, any documentations and all the details are in the proposal or that we have all the information we need from the applicants. So it's really just tying up any loose ends that we have on the different proposals, but we're getting very close to um, to finalize all of these um, these funding decisions. So hopefully we'll have it in the next couple of weeks here. Okay, thank you. And and you mean when you're talking about them, um, and uh, you mean all of them, right? All three of the projects. Well, yeah, one of them's already been, or hasn't the IOI already been? Correct. That IOI yes. is already, that we've already been funded. So you're just talking about the two, the city's project and yeah. the border. 
Correct, and these are the two that we discussed last meeting right. uh, to be funded with the Groundwater Conservation Grant. And I, I mean not only Santa Cruz AMA projects, we also have the other, uh, we have over, I, I want to say about 13 or more projects um, throughout the AMA, so we're, we're trying to get them all into a place where we can finalize the funding of all of them at the same time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Of course. And Mr. Larkin, if I, if you don't mind uh, repeating it, so I know that we had the motion and did you say that there were three members who recommended? I, I heard, yeah, I heard three, I heard three eyes out okay. there, including mine, so. Was there can any? I make, can, I, can, I make, can I make a suggestion? Yeah, please. Uh, Mark. Uh, we, we started going to a, to the school board meetings by uh, just for legality reasons, but since we're on online and so forth, we uh, do a, 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 a member call, call each member and have a vote yes or no, and make it more clear, I, I believe. Okay, you know, that's a good idea. And let me back up then to that, that last vote. The other, the other one on, on uh, election was... So I guess that's okay. On that last one, um, whoever uh, didn't vote, I mean, I, and I should have asked there, um, you know, all those um, opposed to keeping the, uh, the withdrawal fees the same signify by saying no. So, okay, so if we had, um, you know, let me let me just go through and do a, a call, like you said, Ron. Um, so back up to that vote for identification purposes is, uh, you know, all those in favor of maintaining the withdrawal fee schedule the same. Um, give your name and or let me go through the names to do it. So I'll do mine first. Mark Larkin, aye. Ron Fish, aye. Dan Bell, aye. Gary Brasher. Okay. Um, Gary, are you there? Are you abstaining? Gary's muted. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm an I. Okay. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> Gary. Okay. So we got that in the record. So, um, are we ready to go with, with Natalie's on agenda number five, management plan discussion? We should. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chairman Larkin and members of the council. Um, my name is Natalie Mast. I am the program manager uh, working on the management plans here at ADWR. Um, and I'm here to provide an update on the uh, status of the proposed uh, Santa Cruz AMA fourth management plan. Um, uh, also with us today, as we mentioned earlier, is McKenna Welsh, and uh, she will be providing a little bit of information on our fifth management plan efforts. Um, Oh, thank you. Um, so as I've shared before, uh, we do have a goal to complete the remaining fourth management plans by the end of the year. We are on track at this point to reach that goal. We're very excited about that. Um, uh, so we are continuing to move forward with those. Um, we are concurrently uh, working on the development of the fifth management plans through the work of the fifth management plans work group. And we actually just had a meeting of that work group this morning. So um, we are continuing to move along on both of those uh, timelines and both of those tasks. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. So as you know, we did publish an initial draft of the Santa Cruz AMA fourth management plan at the beginning of June. Um, and we provided an opportunity for stakeholder and GUAC comments on that draft. Um, our general pr 
process uh, for those plans um, can kind of be seen across the top of this slide. So we publish an initial draft. Uh, we uh, work with the GUAC and um, stakeholders to obtain comments and then we update uh, and publish a new updated draft of that plan. Um, after that updated draft is published, then we move into kind of the formal legal promulgation process for that plan, uh, which involves uh, noticing and a public hearing and, and a number of additional steps that I'll detail on the next slide. Um, before we go to that, though, I would like to point out that um, the under under the statutes for the management plans, the conservation programs do go into effect at least two years after a plan is adopted. So these three management plans that we are working to adopt in this year, Phoenix, Pinal, and Santa Cruz, um, all of the conservation programs under those plans would go into effect on January 1st, 2023. Um, if we could go to the next slide, thank you. Um, so the legal adoption process, the promulgation process of the management plans is kind of extensive, but you can see at least a summary of it laid out on this slide. Um, the first step in that promulgation process is um, a, uh, we issue an order, we, we send out an order issuing the proposed management plan. And with that, we uh, issue a hearing notice. Um, the hearing must occur at least 30 days after that hearing notice. Um, and that hearing notice opens the formal comment period on that proposed plan. So um, that formal comment period goes from the date the hearing notice is issued until 5 p.m. on the date of the hearing. Um, after the hearing occurs, so we, we hold a hearing, um, people are able to either submit written comments or um, submit verbal comments at the hearing, or in this case, uh, there will be option for online participation for that hearing. Um, within 30 days of uh, the hearing, we, ADWR, uh, publish a summary of our findings from the hearing. Then we can elect to uh, move forward with the adoption of that plan. Um, with any potential edits that we may uh, summarize in that uh, uh, findings from the hearing. Um, after we decide to adopt a plan, then we are required to uh, both publish um, that uh, the findings and that order of adoption in local newspapers for two weeks, and we are required to send out um, notices of those conservation requirements to each of the rights holders in that active management area. So um, that's that notice of conservation requirements um, mailing is, is our date that sets that two year timeline that I, I mentioned before. So the management plan goes into effect no sooner than two years after those conservation notices are mailed. And we usually just shift that to the beginning of the next reporting year to, to make things administratively easier, both on our side and for the users. Um, so again, as I said, um, assuming we are able to make it through this whole process before the end of the calendar year, the conservation requirements in the uh, Santa Cruz AMA fourth management plan would become effective on January 1st, 2023. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. So all of that was maybe a, a very complicated way of saying uh, that ADWR is at this point prepared to begin the promulgation process, the, the legal adoption process for the Santa Cruz AMA fourth management plan. We have uh, published an updated fourth management plan site. Um, and uh, today I'm here to respectfully request that the UAC support the promulgation of that plan. Uh, so with that, I would gladly take any questions from the council. Um, hi, this is, yeah, this is Mark Larkin. And, and I just wanna 
be sure when, when we're talking, uh, because we do have this comment period open, and for us down here, um, I made a note here. We want to uh, talk to uh, Alejandro at the city and make sure the city gets their two cents worth in on this, on comments, um, and just remind them. Uh, but when you say promulgation on there, um, you just mean that, you know, this this thing is this thing is, just put it out. Just put it out. I'm sorry, I think I missed the tail end of that question there. Okay, and I see Alejandro has, has uh, uh, come in or called in or something, so um, great. But uh, so, um, but promulgation on this just means that this is just getting the plan officially out for comment, right? It's not a, uh, um, you know, it's, it's not anything like endorsing the draft plan uh, right. as it is, right? That's that's correct. So so the promulgation is just the legal adoption process. So what we're, we're we are requesting here is that you support that we start that legal adoption process for this plan. And I apologize. I apparently made a mistake on the slide and accidentally left Phoenix on there. That should say Santa Cruz. I apologize for that. Good. good. Uh, yeah, we're not the capital yet. <laughs> This is Dan. I was wondering if you could if you could switch back to the previous slide, Looney Tunes. So, so you want us to, to right there in the middle? You want us to adopt that? The, the final order of adoption is that what you're asking for? No. So, so the the point oh, of the promulgation right now, of it. Okay. Yeah. Right, would be the very okay. very beginning of this, which is okay. which is we would move forward with uh, issuing the hearing notices and and getting that hearing out on the calendar. We okay. we have tentatively scheduled that hearing um, for the end of September at this point. Okay. All right, I'm good with that. Okay. Any um, anything else from the uh, um, the the uh, council on that? None. Not, none from me. Okay, in that case, um, so we entertain a motion to uh, um, somebody wants to make a motion to uh, go ahead and begin the process by promulgating the plan or recommending recommend that the plan be promulgated for the Santa Cruz AMA. This is Dan. I'll go ahead and make the motion that the, the plan enter the uh... The promulgation uh, stage uh, for the process. This Gary, and I'll, I'll certainly second that. Okay, it's been uh, the motion has been made and seconded to uh, begin promulgation uh, to recommend promulgation of the draft Santa Cruz AMA Fourth Management Plan. Is there any discussion on that? None. Okay, well, let me, but does somebody say, no? Okay, let me go ahead and, and then do a, um, like I said, like Ron suggested, do a roll call, roll call vote. So um, plan's been made and seconded to um, recommend promulgation of the Santa Cruz AMA fourth management plan. Um, so if you're in favor, signify by saying aye. I'll call Mark Larkin, aye. Um, Dan Bell? Aye. Ron Fish? Aye. Gary Brasher? Aye. Okay, um, the motion passes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, we appreciate it. Okay, and then I guess, uh, so now we got McKenna to uh, wanna let us since we're just getting the fourth management plan off the ground, at least as, as far as the adoption process, you guys are always jumping ahead. Now you got the, the, the fifth management plan. Aren't you ever satisfied? But can you give us an update on, on how the, the groups are going? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Larkin and members of the council. So my name is McKenna Walsh. Um, I am a management plan specialist. Um, working mainly on the fifth management plans, but 
helping out wherever needed. Um, next slide. So last year um, in July, we formed the management plans work group. Um, that is the stakeholder process for developing these SPIF management plans. And in 2021, we plan to start drafting those SPIF management plans. We plan to adopt those by the end of 2023 so that they will then become effective January 1st of 2025. Next slide. So um, the highlighted yellow um, goals that are on this screen are where we are um, currently at in the management plans work group. So we've been meeting regularly since that um, initial July 2019 meeting. We've assessed the existing conservation programs and now we've moved more into updating existing strategies as well as discussing potential new strategies. And as we're moving more into this developmental phase, we wanted to compile all of these proposals and public comments in one place. So um, because of that, we created a fifth management plans concepts webpage, which is um, what I will mainly be focusing on today. So I wanted to um, walk you through a short tour of that webpage. Um, next slide. And um, this is a screenshot of that web page, but I'm going to go ahead and present this to you and kind of walk you through um, how the web page is set up so that you can um, see where everything is. Um, let me just share my screen one moment. All right. Um, can you all see that okay? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so we have each of our subgroups listed out on this page. Um, under each of these subgroups, you can click on the subgroup. So we'll start with agricultural subgroup. Under there, there will be um, any of the concepts that we've covered. Um, so our first concept are the tiers for the BMP program. So if you click on that concept link, it will have a drop down. And below that, we have a summary of the concept right below the concept title. After that, we will have any links to uh, meetings where those concepts were presented. And below the meeting link, we will also have a short summary that just describes what was covered in the meeting. Below that, if there were any dashboards or any other visuals um, that give a that go along with the concept or give um, a visual representation of the concept, we've included that here. And this is a live dashboard, so um, you can go ahead and click in here. You can filter through the different AMAs. Um, you can also make this full screen by clicking um, the arrow in the bottom right corner. Below that, we will have a stakeholder comment section. Um, we have been providing some questionnaires at our subgroup meetings that ask questions about the concept concepts presented. So we're providing the responses in, on this web page, and then we also provide our email address if anyone has additional um, comments on those concepts. And so an example of one without a dashboard, but a different graphic is this integrated farm program. Um, so same format throughout each of these concepts. Here we have an image of this integrated farm program, um, the stakeholder comments and links to any of the questionnaires. So right now we don't have a um, concept or any public comments below the industrial subgroup. Um, but I'll give another example under the turf breakout group. So the concept is the golf course conservation. So here um, there's multiple meetings where this concept has been presented. So you can click on this and it will take you to the meeting page that will have the agenda, presentation, the meeting recording. Um, and then here we have a link to a proposal calculator that goes along with that concept. 
So really this page is just compiling all relevant material that goes along with these concepts and also provides the opportunity to read through stakeholder comments and submit new comments. So um, the same format goes throughout the rest of these drop downs. Um, I can pause here in case anyone wants to take a closer look at any part of this web page before I stop sharing my screen. What uh, what types of other stakeholder comments are there, or are there anything in there? <laughs> so um, we have. So under the turf one right here, we have um, actual written comments from Jim, Town of Gilbert, and then we have our breakout questionnaire responses. And I can show you what this looks like really quick. So we've compiled um, our survey responses to PDF so that you can quickly look through, um, see any, so this was like a yes or no question here. So you can see the responses from that questionnaire. These are all written comments. Um, the blue section will have the question and below that is um, all of the written comments there. So um, that's what the questionnaires look like. And then um, let's see. I was just, I was more interested in the, in the other stakeholder comments. If oh, right here. Over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have this as a placeholder right now. We haven't received okay. any general stakeholder comments, but we wanted to have a place for those in case people um, submitted written comments that didn't really fit into just one of the subgroup categories. Thank you. You're welcome. Were there any questions? Any other questions? None. So yeah, this just continues throughout um, the same format through each of these categories that you can see here. And this is available and this is on the website. website. Um, you can find it on the Fifth Management Plans webpage and I'll also have the link in this presentation. So um, there is the link for the Fifth Management Plans Concepts webpage. Um, if any of you review it and have any comments, um, feel free to email us at managementplans at azwater.gov. Um, we have some upcoming uh, subgroup meetings. Our next subgroup is the Agricultural Subgroup. That will be on September 2nd. After that, we have our Municipal Subgroup on September 14th. Um, and then we have Safefield on September 30th. So those are our next three upcoming. Um, after that, in October, we have our turf subgroup on October 22nd. And then we have our next full work group meeting on December 9th. Next slide. I have a question is, is on the website, for instance, with an upcoming meeting, like looking at ag coming up on the 2nd of uh, September, um, do you list a, uh, um, is there a topics list that goes um, with that particular meeting about what, you know, what's going to be discussed at that particular meeting? Um, do you have that website or do you just say it's just the agricultural subgroup meeting? So we do develop an agenda um, before each meeting. We send out um, an email about a week before the meeting with a link to the agenda. Um, so if, if that's something you'd be interested in receiving, if you're not on our um, fifth management plans email list, um, I could certainly add you to that. And we do send out agendas before every meeting. And then after the meeting, we also post um, the presentation slides and the recording of the meeting as well. Okay, and that's just one thing is uh, I'm, I'm on the, uh, I know I'm on the uh, um, notice list there. But I, I guess I'd encourage, I don't know if the other council members are, or you just shoot that out to the GUACs in general. But um, yeah, probably be a good idea, gentlemen, to just be.
be on it. I mean, whether you're going to participate or look at it, but just to be kind of aware of what's being discussed, um, you know, out there, if you've got a particular interest in, uh, in there. And McKenna, this is enough. I just wanted to uh, let you know, Chair Larkin and GOC members, everyone that we have on the Groundwater User Advisory Council, members and interested parties are on the management plan interested parties as well. So you should all receive those correspondences. If from some reason you do not receive them, please feel free to email me or the management plans and we'll be more than happy to add you, but everyone should be on that list as well. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, next slide. All right, um, so that's all Natalie and I have for today. Um, but I would be happy to take any other questions or comments that um, the council has. Okay, does anybody, um, I've got no questions. Does anybody else on the council have? None from me, no, sir. No, none from me. Okay, then. Um, thank you very much on that. And if we could go to uh, number six, uh, and I'm going to do the um, director's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the council, so I would like to provide um, update on two topics. The first is the annual report update that we just conclude this season, and then the uh, groundwater, oh sorry, the Governor's Water Augmentation Innovation and Conservation Council. So I'll start with the 2019 annual water use reports. And as I'm sure you all know, annual reports are due on March 31st. Uh, this year, in response to COVID-19 emergency, ADWR waived all late fees associated with filing annual reports uh, from March 31st all the way through June 26th. Uh, now that we're about two months past that date, um, we wanted to provide you with some statistics for the 2019 annual reports, uh, starting by just giving you an, a general idea of how many reports we are looking forward to receiving in a year. So for 2019, we'll look at about 6,500, more like 6,600 reports that are due for the year. As of this week, we received almost 5,900 reports. Uh, so there are about 682 fail to file reports, which stands at 10.4 uh, failure to file rate. This number is actually a bit higher than what we've seen in previous years. So for example, last year we stood at about 7.6% of fail to file rate in July. Uh, but that being said, it, it's pretty understandable given um, the circumstances with uh, the pandemic and everything else that, that took place these past few months. Um, so we usually send a failure to file um, right after the deadline passes. This year we send a failure to file letter in mid-July to all owners of the missing reports. Uh, and this actually generated additional wave of filing. Uh, we'll also send a final failure to file letters in a few weeks, which we do hope will help reduce the failure to file number that we currently have. Uh, the table in the bottom, which Kennedy gonna scroll in just a second. So this table breaks down the reports that were received by uh, electronic means and as hard copies. So about 2,800 reports or maybe like 49% were filed online and almost 3,000 reports or 51% were filed as hard copies. Uh, this is actually an increase of about 6% of reports filed online from last year. This year, for those of you who do file annual reports uh, and did it online, we hope you did notice that uh, we did uh, redesign the electronic annual reporting tool in collaboration with our IT team to improve the functionality and performance of the tool. Uh, so we believe that this improvement in addition to the COVID circumstances that force everyone to work remotely, uh, those are probably the two biggest contributions uh, to this increase in online reporting. 
Uh, unfortunately, not all of the forms are currently available to be filed online, and that's why we see a relatively high number of reports still filed by hand. And we do try to add more forms to the electronic tool every year, so we do hope that the number of reports filed online uh, will steadily increase, and it has actually been increased pretty significantly uh, through the years. And I would suspect that makes sense, but um, for us, submitting reports online is very beneficial um, because the data that entered electronically goes directly to our database automatically, which reduces, first of all, human error, um, both for the reporter and uh, human error with, within our staff man manually entering this data. It also allows our staff to devote more time on quality control and planning activities data transparency initiatives and other water resources efforts instead of spending hours upon hours of uh, entering data manually. So again, we hope to see that number of reports increasing as we, as we include more and more reports online. And I'll stop here and take any questions you may have on the annual water use reports update that I just provided before I move on to the second topic. Uh, this is Dan. One question. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Dan. No, go ahead, Dan. So uh, this is Dan, and, and I tried to do uh, submit for a mineral extraction right that we have online, and I remember doing it in the past online, but it told me that that function or that feature was unavailable at this time uh, on the website. I was able to do our our type two water right with no problem online, but I I was not able to do. The other one, so I have, I have not submitted that yet. Okay, well, so I'll just start by saying that being a, a relatively new tool or a redesigned tool, we did encounter a slight technical difficulties with some reports. We have fixed everything, so hopefully uh, there shouldn't be any issues. But with your situation specifically, we're more than happy to help you um, figure out the issue. You can either call us or we can have staff call you and, and assist you with that. And that goes to anyone. We do have staff answering any questions, any phone calls or emails that do come, and we're, we're always happy to, to help in any way we can. And, and I, did, I did call in uh, questioning uh, that, and I, I did get a call from somebody, but they said that that wasn't their department, that it was just their turn on the rotation. Uh, to answer calls, and and then I didn't get anything after that. So, okay, we'll we'll make sure that someone will contact you and and take care of that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Of course, uh, I've got one question. Uh, what what is? Uh, I'm sure there must be some that never file any reports. What's the harshest penalty that can be handed out other than just uh, added added fee? Anything? So let me see if I understood your question, me, uh, Mr. Fish. Is there, what is there a penalty? Yeah, is there a penalty if you never hand in your water usage annually? So the penalty is by by years. So let's say you didn't file your annual report for 2019. The penalty is $25 per month for being late up to six months. So that would be $150 plus 10% of the withdrawal fees uh, that you would owe for every month you um, have been late or haven't filed up to six months. So that would be 60% of the withdrawal fees that you were uh, to pay. So $150 plus 60% of the withdrawal fees for each year that you haven't filed. Right. But the is there say somebody don't file for 10 years 20 is there a point where the water department goes after the people so that's a great question we do right. we do try to um follow up on on compliance as much as we can as you saw we have almost 7,000 rights so we try to do the best we can and contacting the fail to file especially if we see um, a trend going on so yeah we definitely try to do the best we can on catching those non reporters and sometimes it's even just informing some some changes happen and people don't 
how they're aware uh, that they need to report. So even just communicating and educating the public um, and of course enforcing uh, as much as we can. So it's really just honor, just uh, it's on your honor to do it. They're not gonna put you in jail or anything like that. I'm doing this on for Mark Larkin's sake with his 9 million acre feet. I'm not sure he's, a, he's <laughs> fine. So ADWR does not have the authority to pull and put anyone in jail for not reporting any reports. Uh, however, again, as I mentioned, there are fees associated uh, and there are some civil penalties right. that can can be um, enforced if need be. Okay. Well, that's, that, that answers my curiosity. Thank you. Of course. So, so Dan, Dan's going to get up, beat up too bad for for missing his uh, for missing his uh, firing. firing. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Is this? Uh, yeah. Is this? Uh, yes. Yes. It's me. I I'm kind of lost here with the my uh, camera is not working, and that's where the microphone is. But I have a question, if I may. Please. Please. Yeah, on the uh, we tried to file electronically was really confusing. Uh, so what we did is we file, we used the old form, and then we tried to translate to the new form because uh, uh, the information was all over the place. So I don't know. There's a way to to link more the old the, the old form to the new electronic filing. So you can guide us better on where to where to put the information. And uh, after we try going directly into the electronic, uh, uh, we were all confused. So we say, okay, print one of the old forms, put all the information there, and then we translated that to the to the electronic form. But uh, I would like to see if there's a way to to link more the old with the new one. Yeah, and that's a great suggestion. Yeah, and we're, great always, suggestion. And we're, always, we're always looking forward to recommendations and um, improvements. So we're more than happy to work with you on what do you think will be better for you and other reporters. Uh, again, this is a work in progress and we do want to make it as easy as possible. Uh, for as many people to file online. I would mention that currently, I'm not sure exactly what report you're referring to, but currently we do not have the uh, providers or municipal providers reports online. Uh, you may refer to the Excel sheet. Uh, then again, whatever it is that we can do to make it easier, we're always happy to work with you. So, so definitely please provide us with these comments. We can have our municipal planner contact you and and get those uh, recommendations from you. Recommendations from you. Well, I'm more confused now because I thought that you had the the uh, electronic filing for municipal, and that's what we follow. But uh, I don't know what we did then. It's. I think you may refer to the Excel sheet um, that is in electronic format because it does tie to to other reports that you need to submit if it's um, recovery and recharge perhaps, but we can definitely talk online and, and see where you had some issues and where we can improve. Can improve. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay. I know that is is that it for the director's report or do you, got, do you have more? So I have uh, the second update I would like to provide is on the uh, Governor's Water Augmentation Innovation and Conservation Council that I can just dive right in if, if there are no more questions about the annual report. So we've mentioned, I'm gonna call the council in short, 
Um, and we have mentioned the council in previous meetings, uh, but for those who missed it, the council meets quarterly and is charged with a number of items. Most significantly is identifying and recommending opportunities for water augmentation, innovation, and conservation for Arizona. The council is also tasked with providing guidance on issues to ADWR director upon the director's request. At the last meeting of the council on March 13, 2020, ADWR provided the council with foundational information regarding tribal water rights and water rights settlements to ensure a basic understanding ahead of presentations by tribes at a future council meeting. So the tribes will speak to the council regarding tribal water rights and water rights settlements at a special meeting of the council on September 10 from 9 to 3 p.m. So if you want to mark your calendar, if you're interested in this topic. Uh, the council will also hold its uh, next regularly scheduled meeting uh, the following week, which is September 15th from 10 a.m. to noon. So again, if you're interested in council meetings, please do mark your calendars. Uh, the council has currently four working committees. The first committee is the long-term augmentation committee with the purpose of identifying and exploring methods of augmenting water supplies uh, in the state. The desalination committee is the second one and its purpose is to evaluate and overcome barriers to desalination projects and identify opportunities to assist in developing potential projects in the state. Uh, this past year for this committee was largely focused on exploring the challenges and opportunities involved with the use of desalination of brackish groundwater. The Nonayame Groundwater Committee uh, is the third one and its purpose is to address groundwater issues outside of the active management areas. Meeting of this committee have been largely informational in nature in order to gain understanding of the status of groundwater supplies outside the active management areas, uh, data available in those areas, and the data gaps that exist. Committee participants identified several issues and concerns relating to groundwater use as topics for discussion, and then they narrowed the list to four different categories. Uh, the first is groundwater management strategies in those rural areas. Um, the second is data needs. The third is best management practices in education. And the fourth is well monitoring or measuring and reporting. The committee will be taking on the topic of irrigation on expansion areas at their upcoming meeting. Uh, there is still no date, but um, keep tuned for, for the date for that meeting if you're interested. Uh, the fourth committee is the post-2025 AMA's committee, which I think might be the most relevant committee to us here. Uh, its purpose is to identify challenges within the active management areas and generate strategies and solutions beyond 2025. The committee began the work of identifying challenges in October 2019 and will continue the process of issue identification and anal analysis throughout 2020. The committee plans to have a consensus-based list of issues. Each will be described in an issue brief. Then they'll bring those uh, issue briefs and list of issues to the council for consideration and discussion no later than December 2020, which is um, a date for the council meeting, the last council meeting of the year. Once there is consensus around the issues and priorities identified by the committee uh, and there is support from the council, the work to develop those solutions will begin in 2021. So far, the committee has completed three issue briefs. The first is replenish groundwater pumping. The second is on hydrologic disconnect and the third is on exam 12. The next meeting of this committee is August 26 at 1 p.m. So again, if you're interested, uh, please do attend. Uh, both the committee meetings and uh, the council meeting are all open to the public. The committee meetings are where much of the council work is accomplished, um, and they include both council and non-council members, and there, there is no formal membership. So we do encourage anyone who's interested uh, in any of these activities uh, to please participate and contribute. Uh, and again, all meeting recordings of the council and all the committees are available on ADWR website. Um, all of the um, agenda and information on this as for the GYC are also available on the website. 
and that sums up this this update that I have, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay. On that, um, any, uh, uh, in that case, I'll just move on. Uh, anything else from the uh, council? Any issues that the council wants to bring up? Yeah, Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm still interested in, in the appointment committee, whether they're moving ahead to renew our, our appointments or whether we're being pushed on down the road or, or, or what. I never, I never get any kind of information after you apply for it. Okay, yeah, I um, and um, and I can can address that, or Kennedy can. Yeah, I'll be happy to. So we've been in touch with boards and commissions. I know that they're working. Uh, it apparently is um, a little more detailed process than I thought, but they are working towards uh, reappointing and appointing members. So hopefully, we would have the reappointments and appointments in place next few weeks, I dare to say, but again, I know that they're working on it. So as soon as I know, I'll definitely let, let you all know. Okay. Do you, do you know whether we got my situation solved? Got it, uh, I did understand that correctly. your, yes, I did understand that your application was received. Okay. That's good. And we, thank you. Thank you. Are, are we missing, I mean, um, we're supposed to be five, um, five on the council. Is that correct? Correct. And they're, they are working on, on the fifth appointment. Okay. And, and if I'm, and just so I'm, I'm clear, the fifth appointment is, uh, representative from the city, correct? It is recommended that the GOAC uh, would represent the different sectors. So given that there is no municipal represent representative, um, that would be a desirable outcome, yes. Okay, okay. It's, and that's just a recommendation. That's not a, a requirement uh, for the makeup of the council? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Anybody have anything else before I call to the public? So, okay, and-, and Follow, following, following up on that, Mark. Yes. Probably couldn't do anything because it's not on the agenda, but is that something we should add to our next agenda if something hasn't been done on that one about recommend, recommending on the committee? I think, um, I think we could actually, we could recommend that, um, Somebody, you know, that that they boards and commissions hurry up and get somebody from the uh, uh, city. Or do you mean man, that that the board specifically or the council specifically be made up of members from distinct sectors? What do you mean? I, I think even if it don't, even if it doesn't have any effect, I think it would be worthwhile to show that way have an interest in who is being appointed or, or so forth. You know, I think we we can. I think there's there's a problem with uh, how the the uh, um, these councils are constructed um, under statute, I think in Title 45 or whatever, but the uh, um, is that, you know, I don't think that we can pick uh, members, I can see all kinds of problems. No, I don't. I, let me clarify. I don't mean picking person. Like make sure you know that we've got those different oh, areas. Yeah. Make sure the that we're represented. represented. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Like at this point, we don't have anybody from the municipality. Like we lost that when I can't even remember the name of the guy that was with the city that uh, uh, that moved on to Oral Valley, but we lost municipal participation then, but uh, that we would feel that's important to have the municipal participation in the committee. Well, I, 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 I think we do, and we could, um, 
we can, you know, I, I think we can put that on the agenda basically as a, a strong recommendation to uh, the department and to the uh, um, boards and commissions that we get uh, somebody who can represent the interests of the, uh, the city on the council with um, them being a, you know, such a, a big water user and of course, you know, representing the largest number of water consumers. Um, yeah. So yeah, we definitely need, and, and of course they're involved in the projects, the projects come to them and, and they generate certain projects. So we definitely need a, a representative from the city on here. So I think, yeah, let's put that if um, on the, the agenda for next time, as, you know, sort of new business we can do next time. And then, uh, um, and oh, maybe there'll be one, you know, when these things come through. Um, right. right. But so, yeah, I think, I think we can do that. Um, okay. Any, anything else on the council? I don't have anything else. Okay. That's um, then a call to the public. We already heard from uh, Alejandro on there and, but anybody else out there in the, uh, in the public who has comments, questions for either the council or for any DWR staff. Well, I don't see, you know, we're just, we're not as popular as we once were. These, we used to have all kinds of, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> Um, okay, so if um, uh, if we have nothing from the public, then I'm just going to ask the staff: Is there anything else uh, that the staff wants to to add to this? No, sir. Nothing from DWR. Okay. In in that case, um, I guess. Uh, I know. Do you want me to um, call you or you to call me after we adjourn the meeting, or should we stay on the meeting line? Or um, you can you call me. You can call me if you want, or I can call you. Whatever works. Um, give me your number. That way, we all have it. We can call you at any time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's six zero two. Uh huh. Seven seven one. Seven one, eight six zero oh, seven, eight six zero oh, seven, and um, just so so everybody knows there, and we have it on the record. That's so um, as the chairman, I'll be um, signing our uh, um, our recommendation to promulgate the plan. So that's what that's about is is uh, shifting that electronic equipment across the state. Um, okay, with uh, nothing else there, unless there's some kind of objection from anyone, um, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn this meeting at, it looks like, about 3.15. Very good. So what, what's the approximation date for our next meeting? Do they have one? Or did I miss that? We currently don't have a date, but as soon as okay. we have one, we'll send... As soon as we have an idea of the timeline, we'll send Doodle Poll and, and make sure that everyone's available for that meeting. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Very uh, good. We'll go ahead. Thank you all. Thank, we'll you. Thank you all. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for showing Thank up. Also, meeting is adjourned. Okay. You, we'll see, see everybody someplace. Thank Bye. you. Bye.